Welcome to our lecture online. So, what do we see when we have a telescope trained at one of those supernova explosions? It turns out there's two different kinds. We have the type 1a and the type 2. The type 2 is the one that we we've been dealing with when the super red giant comes to its end time, the final end moments when the core implodes in itself and the big shock wave goes out and the neutrinos heat up the layers to the point where they blast away the outer layers of the star. The other type of supernova, the type 1a, is when a white dwarf exceeds the Chandraskar limit and implodes in on itself. Well, with the type 2 supernova, we have what we call a light curve. Over time, about 300 days or so, we see, first of all, a rapid brightening of the star. The star becomes so bright that it almost outshines the rest of the galaxy. Not quite, but it's quite an impressive sight where the brightness of the star increases by many thousands of times the original brightness as a red giant. And of course, as a red giant, it already is a very bright star. But when it comes to be a supernova, it is many, many times, many thousands of times the brightness of the original red giant. In a type 2 supernova, the brightness increases till it reaches about a minus 16.5 in the absolute uh, brightness scale, as opposed to a type 1a supernova, which reaches about a minus 19. Now notice, type 1a supernovas always have about the same brightness when they explode. Type 2 supernovas range from about minus 16 to minus 17.5 because you can have different sizes of red giants that go to the stage. When it comes to type 1a supernovas or white dwarfs imploding it on themselves, well, there's only one size of which that happens, so they're all exactly the same brightness. But you can see that there's a difference in the curves. So at first it reaches a maximum brightness in a matter of a few days, and then it begins to decrease in brightness. Notice that we have a kind of a strange slope where it's steep, not so steep, and steeper again. That's very unique for a type 2 that we don't see in a type 1. Also, we see what we call the Balmer lines. These are the lines that we see in hydrogen, the red, the green, the turquoise, green, blue color, and the, and the purple color from the uh, electrons around the hydrogen gas, which is present in the curve of a type 2 supernova and not present in a type 1a supernova because that's a carbon ball that's imploding and there's very little hydrogen involved there. So you can see that the brightness goes from about a minus 16.5, which is probably close to almost a billion times the brightness of the sun, down to minus 11, which is then about maybe 10 million times the brightness of the sun in a matter of about 300 days. The time that we can really see it very bright is probably about several days at the, t at the peak right here where it absolutely is phenomenal in how bright this can be. Now, how many of those supernovas happen or occur in our galaxy? It turns out that about once every 500 years, we see a supernova explosion. We have historical data that those have occurred at about 500 year intervals. Now, they occur, the type 1a and the type 2 supernovas occur at about the same frequency. So we can say that for each type, they happen once every about 1,000 years in our galaxy. Now, of course, since there's billions of galaxies out there, we see type 1a and type 2 supernovas all the time in all the galaxies around us. But for our own galaxy, they are rather, rather rare. And if you haven't seen one, well, you may have to wait a long time before you get to see another one within our own galaxy. The last one that we did see was in 1987. That was the supernova explosion that occurred in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which was one of our companion galaxies about 170,000 light years away. So, there you go. That's how you tell the difference between a Type 1a and a Type 2 supernova. This is the unique light curve that we see over a period of hmm, about 300 days after the explosion. And that is how it's done. So what did that happen? With the last one, 1987. And it was in the Large Magellanic Cloud. It was actually a blue giant that went through this process, which is kind of a unique process. Have you have seen it with the naked eye? Uh, yes, definitely. But you have to live in the Southern Hemisphere to see it, because we can't see the... What was the Northern Hemisphere one? Uh, we haven't seen one until the last one that we saw in the Milky Way galaxy was around 1600, 1640 or something like that. So it's been a while. That the one and I wasn't around then to see it. <laughs> yes. Is that the one where you talk about some artists painted it? In yes, yes, I think so, yeah. And then we had the one that happened 
in 1054 AD, a thousand years ago, that we have hieroglyphics in the uh, American desert. Indians painted it, and the Chinese astronomers actually have re records of seeing it. I don't know what they called it, but that wasn't even in, yeah, that was in our own galaxy. That was about 6,000 light years away. So that was bright. You could see it during the daytime. So, all right. And you weren't around then either? I wasn't around then. I'm not that old. 